Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kidlit Joy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with my Middle Grade March TBR. Middle Grade March is a month-long read-along hosted by Life Between Words, Books and Jams and On The Middle Shelf. I will leave their announcement video linked down below so that you can check it out if you're interested. And obviously the goal of Middle Grade March is to just try and read at least one Middle Grade fiction title through the month. And if you can do more, you can, there are some prompts. I uh, have picked a TBR with some middle grade titles that I would like to try and get to. Two of them I will definitely be reading, I'll talk about those first, and then I have some others that I would like to prioritise, and if I get a chance to get to them I, I absolutely will. In all honesty I haven't really thought about the prompts as much as the fact that I just want to try and pick up some of the middle grade titles that have been sitting in my middle grade TBR pile for a while. So two of them that I would like to get to at the start of the month because they were copies of books that were sent to me for review. The first one is Paper Dragons, The Fight for the Hidden Realm by Siobhan McDermott, which is the first book in middle grade fantasy series. I don't know all that much about it, but I am very much looking forward to picking it up and giving it a shot. It is absolutely gorgeous. This one was sent to me by Hodder via Hachette. And I also believe that this is a debut author, which is really cool. So I'm looking forward to getting to this one. The other title that I'll be reading at the start of the month is Look Me in the Eye by Jane Godwin. This book sort of sits in that upper middle grade young YA category. It, the starting category age for this is 11 years old. And I think most people are probably gonna call it young adult, but, I do, but it does sort of fit into that upper middle grade category. So Jane Godwin is an incredible Australian author who writes amazing books. The way that she uses language to tell her stories is always amazing. Her picture books are some of my top favourites and I have yet to try some of her middle fiction writing. So I'm very, very excited. So this is a contemporary story about two friends who are starting high school and their friendship, I think, gets challenged when an older cousin comes to town and is causing trouble when one of the parents begins to almost obsessively track their child to keep tabs on them and it seems like you know part of the blurb says it's a dramatic and compelling story about freedom control and whether we have the right to know everything about the people close to us so i'm intrigued i'm very intrigued to see where this one goes and then i have a stack of potential maybe hopefully we'll get to them books so i have the new person by anna bradford i've been meaning to read this for ages this is a book that we have at work and it's a set and I just I want to read it so I know how I can recommend it to people. It is a contemporary middle fiction story. I have a sci-fi middle grade title. This is Out of This World by Sonia Spreen Bates and this is about a family who are on an intergalactic holiday and their spaceship navigation system goes out of control. So I'm very very intrigued and excited. I have The Wild Robot Protects by Peter Brown. I've just started reading The Wild Robot with my class. The only book I haven't read is the most recent release, which is the third book, and I would like to get to it because Roz is one of my favourite middle grade characters, and she's a robot, which is awesome. I have 200 Minutes of Danger by Jack Heath. This is a series of interconnected short stories that all are very fast-paced action-adventure stories that take about 20 minutes to read, and there are 10 stories in here, so hence the 200 Minutes of Danger. I love this series. This is one of the only ones that I own that I haven't read yet. And then Maybe, hopefully, I'll get to The Witch's Boy by Kelly Barnhill. It's been a hot minute since I read a Kelly Barnhill children's title. The last one I read, I think, was her adult novella, which was delightfully creepy, but I haven't read one of her children's titles for a while, so I'm very excited to get to this fantasy story. It's just, I know it's going to be beautiful. So that is my little stack. I probably won't get to all of them, I'll, I'll be honest, but definitely the first two, and then hopefully a couple more from this stack would be ideal. If you guys are interested in a recommendation list of Australian middle fiction titles, please let me know in the comments. I'm very happy to put one together and have it go up at the start of March if you're looking for some alternate middle grade or middle fiction titles. There is a group book and the only reason I'm not picking it up is because I really struggled to find a copy that was accessible to me over here in Australia. I could buy it but it's about 40-ish plus dollars which is a little steep for me I'll, I'll admit. I'm still on the hunt through my local library system and things like that to see if it comes in and if it does then I will definitely try and read it in the month of March but otherwise I'm just going to go with my, my little TBR and see how I go. But yes, definitely let me know if you would like a recommendation list for Australian middle fiction titles from the last couple of years because I've read some good ones recently and um, I'm very happy to compile that list. In the comments let me know if you're planning on participating in middle grade march and what you think you might pick up. Otherwise feel free to leave me a wolf emoji. There's a little wolf on the front cover of the witch boy. I hope that wherever you're in the world you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.